Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Srimati Sridhar with the World Bank Group and delighted to have with me here Akim Steiner, who is the Administrator for the United Nations Development Program, or UNDP. Akim, thanks so much for joining me here. Pleasure to be with you, thank you. So you are no stranger to the World Bank Group IMF spring annual meetings. You've attended for several years. What are your thoughts on how the conversations have evolved during your visits? Well, spring meetings are always a reflection both of where the bank itself is perhaps trying to be an agenda setter and mm -hmm. at the same time where the world finds itself in that larger development arena. I think if I go back, and it is now three decades that at various intervals I have attended uh, these spring meetings, there are times when the bank is looked to in terms of the development agenda, the development policy setting function. Mm. Because the world is always looking for orientation and the bank has always had an extraordinary intellectual capital, the World Development Report, many other forms of providing, let's say, some leadership. Yes. Then there are moments where the bank has to step in because there is a financial crisis, a debt crisis. Um, let's think back to the hippic era. Mm. Um, then there are moments when the world becomes impatient with the World Bank. 50 years is enough campaign. So mm. these are you know, always moments, I think, that over the years kind of reflect both thinking in the bank, but also the expectations and the aspirations that people have towards the bank. And mm. here we are now in 2023. Yeah reform of the World Bank, expanding its mandate, um, expanding its capital base, but also its financial muscle mm. in helping a world deal with an enormous debt and liquidity crisis after COVID. Mm. And I think in that sense, this is a very interesting meeting because it converges multiple agendas, financial mm. crisis, a mm. policy rethink about how to move forward, climate change, but also a development financing paradigm mm. shift that is necessary. So I think a very intense week and the evolution roadmap of the bank clearly being uh, at the center of, of delegates' attention. Yeah, and it's it's uh, certainly an important time because it's a very unique period. Um, I feel we're ha experiencing a series of poly crises, right? So multiple complex challenges that are really affecting, hindering economic recovery, intensifying human suffering. As administrator of UNDP, what concerns you the most this year? And how do you think the UNDP, the UN, and the wider development community can respond more effectively to some of these challenges? Well, clearly, many people are seeing a poly crisis, if you want, reality playing out yeah. right now. We began to see it already through the pandemic. Um, then in the initial recovery period when we started talking about building back better um, mm. you know the view that we would actually recover from this pandemic now we find ourselves in the middle of an economic crisis a financial crisis so my greatest concern looking at a world in which um, 20 25 years of convergence yeah. was actually happening in terms of per capita income life expectancy uh, digital advancements that we were seeing before the pandemic Suddenly, we saw already in the uh, first of all ability to recover from COVID-19 divergence, many developing countries not being able to get up and start investing again, recovering. And now in the midst of this current economic and financial crisis, frankly, all the indices are pointing towards a world that is diverging again. And this is not good for development. It's not good for, um, let's say, global economic prospects, but also our ability to solve problems together, be it yeah. climate change, poverty, uh, eradication, extremism, mm. um, digital connectivity and inclusion. I mean, these are variables of development progress and a world that is on different pathways right. is it's, not a good way to start, uh, let's no. say, this next era. It feels almost uh, in certain areas, it's a reversal in some gains and, and that's certainly frightening. <laughs> well, we have the SDG Summit in September this year. We are halfway to the year 2030, the Sustainable Development Goals, yes. clearly struggling in terms of their indicators and targets. But I think you asked me earlier on what preoccupies me. I would love to see the world not make the mistake of mm -hmm. looking at targets and indicators and declaring the SDGs a failure. None of us had you know, planned for a pandemic, but rather to come back to the Sustainable Development Goals and realize that that is the agenda, not only for a world to cooperate with each other, mm -hmm. but also for the world to advance on energy transitions, on poverty eradication, mm -hmm. on gender equality. It's an integrated approach to development and it's one that recognizes our interdependencies. And mm. I think this will be a critical litmus test uh, throughout this year. 
Absolutely. Now, we were just saying the UNDP is present in about 60 uh, fragile countries. It's a major partner of the World Bank in FCB settings, especially in some of the more challenging areas like Afghanistan and Yemen. Uh, give us a scale of the problem. And, and how do you see the World Bank UNDP partnership evolving to help some of the, uh, the, the, the most vulnerable in those settings? Well, in many respects, we are the world's um, best attempt to respond together when crises occur, whether mm -hmm. they are natural disasters, the earthquakes in Turkey and mm -hmm. Syria, yes. whether it is conflict such as in Iraq at the time, or um, whether it is simply sheer economic collapse, also countries are going to default. I mean, we have many countries that uh, may have a trigger in terms of a particular crisis, but then it becomes a systemic crisis, even a debt crisis, a default, mm -hmm. leads to protests in the street, radicalization of citizens. They abandon the institutions of government. Politics moves onto the streets. Mm -hmm. The bank and uh, UNDP embedded in the larger UN development system, in virtually every country, we interact with one another. Mm -hmm. In many countries, we are able to complement each other, particularly when you say in fragile and conflict countries, there we are able to often operate with UNDP on the ground, with a long established infrastructure, with personnel, where the bank is able to provide financing, but less perhaps in the traditional way. I mean, even in a country like Afghanistan, where there is not a recognized government as such, you know, there right. are de facto authorities, yet the bank holds significant amounts of money, trust funds mm -hmm. that were earmarked for Afghanistan. The UN development program, but also our humanitarian colleagues, other sister agencies in the UN family, we are able to operate on the ground. We are able to operate directly in support of people. And a very important part of our partnership has to be to not only look at crisis as a humanitarian response issue. It is when we are able to do emergency development, early recovery work, which is precisely what the bank and UNDP have really in recent years come to share a common cause, but also mm. a, a way of thinking complementarity terms. And that's why just a few weeks ago, I brought a whole team of senior leaders in UNDP here to the bank. We met with vice presidents, with our colleagues Anna and Axel also, oh, and discussed yes. how, how do we design more deliberately mm. um, to work together to deploy in these situations? Because it's very easy to wait for circumstances to create this possibility. No, we have to be more deliberate. We are multilateral institutions. We are in a sense, bound to work together. And we are oh. certainly investing heavily in that. And the time to act is certainly now. Absolutely. Um, Akim, finally, what are some areas of opportunities that you see for closer co cooperation, collaboration between the World Bank and, and also the UNDP, especially during this time? Let me give you three very brief examples. Yeah. Digitalization. It's not only about fiber optic cable. It's not only about, you know, number of smartphones per capita. It's building digital ecosystems. It's being able to help governments look at the digital readiness that they, in a sense, are able to examine their own national setting, then set priorities. The bank becomes a very critical part of helping countries to invest in building the digital public infrastructure. I think it's an area where our institutions can serve our partner countries extremely well by working together. Financing of development. At the moment, uh, the UN and UNDP being in a lead role here, is supporting 86 countries with integrated national financing frameworks, helping countries to look at financing that is available to come out of this crisis, to invest in a development pathway forward. Again, working closely together, we can help countries to provide more cohesive advice mm. and also attract investment. The next part is energy transitions. Yes. Um, there is now a significant amount of private capital potentially available, but in many of the countries we work in, um, they are not the natural destinations of private investors, mm. as the bank also finds out. And I think looking at governance, looking at regulatory frameworks, setting the conditions, de-risking the investment environment is another area where we can work hand in hand, because ultimately no government can rely only on public finance. It right. must leverage private capital, domestic, international. The more we can bring down the cost of that capital, the more we can create conditions that attract private investors, the more rapid the transition in the energy sector and the mobility sector will happen, mm. the net zero point of convergence in the future yes. becomes something that unifies countries rather than divides them. And I think this is a crucial part also of what um, in the transition that the bank is now going through with the new president coming in. Mm. Climate change is not another agenda alongside development. It is the development agenda of our time, yeah. but framed in the right way and framed from the perspectives of developing countries. 
well, a lot of important work ahead. Hakeem, thank you so much for the work that you're doing and for sharing a bit more about that with us here today. Really appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Shri. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was Akim Steiner, Administrator for the United Nations Development Program.